Welcome back to Talking Shop with Shop Saber. I'm Brandon. Back with Jesse. Hey, Brandon. Well, that was a little fast. I knew what you were going to say. Yeah, we're, gonna, say, we're on yeah. episode 23. I'm episode 23. Jump. I'm excited for today, buddy. I know why you're excited. Uh, you do. I do know why. It's because we're going to talk about life. Yep. With CNC. Perfect. With? Mr. Morley. Sean Morley, how you doing? Real good. How are you guys? Thanks for coming in today, pal. Literally, everybody is now tuned in. They're ready because Sean is well, here. They're now as excited as we are. Well, we've teased Sean coming on the show for what? Three months. <laughs> yeah, like three months now, so this is it going t- well. It took a little persuasion, that's Yeah, all. he was like, I ain't coming to hang out with you guys. <laughs> I don't blame you. Warm-ups yeah, were rough. He was actually all in until he found out Garrett was going to be here. I, hey, I would have backed out, too. Yeah. <laughs> Garrett will do that to a guy. Hey, Garrett, how's your mic over there? Oh, no mic. Hmm, go we'll figure. I took it. <laughs> Trust me, he doesn't bring it even when you're not here. Yeah, that's true. He brings it one out of every three months. So last week we talked a little bit about auto tool changers. We did. Great episode. Yeah, I thought that went really well. Um, this week we figured we'll talk a little bit more about what it's like to have a shop without a CNC yeah. and what that CNC does for your shop. And yeah. who better to tell us about that than a guy who's had experience without a CNC and then added a CNC to his shop. Absolutely. I don't think we could have found a better guest and we've had a lot of requests for this. So I'm glad we could do this today. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's also fall time. So it is gonna, my favorite season. It's going into fall. We're back to school. Kids are back to school. Thank the Lord. You know who is most excited about that? I, yeah. <laughs> Sean Morley. You got, you got a couple kids, don't you? I got a couple. I yeah. Six few. boys. Six. Yeah. School yeah. could have started in July, but you've yes. been happy. <laughs> yeah. They should sure. go year-round. He's happy with all year-round. They, they should, you know, yeah, you know, they should go year-round. A couple of do work, though, so you lose, go. you lose a couple workers, but... That's true. Yeah, business you know. just got a little bit harder for him. Good thing. He's got a CNC. We, we'd have an age cutoff, though. Like, if you're under 14 years old, you're in school all year long. I'm down with that. Yeah, that'd work. We put the older ones to work. <laughs> work. Although my 13-year-old's a pretty good worker, so... He wants okay, to be we can, amend, to be 13. We, can, we can amend the rule to 12, I guess, for you, Mr. Morley. <laughs> he didn't say the 12-year-old. He said the 13-year-old. Right, but we can't limit it at 13 because it would keep that kid in school, right? So uh, 12 years 13 old. 13-year-old, you, yeah, you don't have 13-year-old, you can go work for Sean. 12 is out. 12 is out. Yep. There we go. Solve that problem. Hey, Garrett, that means you're out. <laughs> you got to go back to school, bro. <laughs> Sorry. That's funny, buddy. Real funny. So, uh, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, having the CNC machine in your shop. Um Sean, your company is Lakes Area Custom Cabinetry, right? You got it. Nailed it. So who the heck is Lakes Area Custom Cabinetry? My wife and I started this, uh, I don't know what it's been, 16 years, 17 years ago. Wow. It's as old as gear it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, <laughs> it's, been, uh, it's been a good road. Uh, we've been blessed very much so. Um, tried this for... What have we had a CNC? 10 years or so? Yeah. Brandon would know this better than I do. Yeah, you've had a um, CNC for almost 10 years now. And uh, that's kind of where things really changed. Uh, we started out just doing some cabinets and furniture stuff is kind of where it got started. Um, and then getting the CNC turned into a whole new ball game, and, and we're able to produce all kinds of stuff now from... Where are you guys uh, located? We are an hour or so north of here. From your office in Chisago yep. City. So for anybody who doesn't know where that is, the reason his company's called Lakes Area is because literally he's in Lakes Area. Like that's all there is up there. Everywhere you turn up there, there's a lake. Like yeah, if you fall out of his front door, you're going to fall in a lake. There are lakes everywhere. Everywhere. 9,500 of the 10,000 lakes are up that way. They're all in Sean's backyard. Yeah. yeah. And it's wonderful. Yeah. It's pretty awesome area. So um, if you get out to our area, you got to drive that way. you got to yeah. go up there because it's absolutely gorgeous area. But sorry to cut you off there. I just had to say it because, you know, Lakes Area is the name of the company, and right. I figured people need to hear where you're located. So um, now I know you said you got started, what, 16 years ago? Something like that. Yeah. And, you know, for the people that are out there right now, maybe some of the guys that are listening or gals even that are listening that have a job they hate and they're thinking about starting something, you know, what was, what was kind of the determining factor for you? What, what pushed you into... I'm not going to work for somebody else. I'm going to do my own thing. You know, that's a tough one. Um, My dad's been, he and uh, my uncle owned a company together for most of their lives. Uh, So it's kind of been in our family to do something. Um, And ironically, I went to school for IT or of what school I did go to and finish. (laughs) Um, And I I did get a job in IT and found I, I got really bored with it and wanted to do something with my hands and one thing led to another, and we went down this road, and here we are today. 
And you and Mrs. Lake's area custom cabinetry started it together. Mm-hmm. Uh, is she in the business every day? She takes care of the books and all the stuff I don't know what I'm doing about. <laughs> she, she does the so IT. She handles she, the majority she, of it. Yeah, she handles the IT now. <laughs> she handles the IT. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's cool. Um, yeah, I've been fortunate enough to obviously know them for a long time. You know, I know, uh, Jesse, you've been just getting to know them over the last yeah. few years. Yep. But, uh, yeah, I've been fortunate enough. I've been up there. I've seen their place. It's, uh, it's amazing how much it's changed even in the time that I've known you guys. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, he's one of those shops that you're like, there's no way a CNC fits in that shop. Yep. And you have so much going on, and it's, it fits. I mean, it's this, the main piece in your entire shop. Yep, yep. We've changed uh, three times now the size, and now we're, we're looking again. How, uh, this is all grown. How big is your company now? In which way? People? As far as your people and size of your facility? So, uh, we've got five people on payroll, okay. um, some part-timers, full-timers. Um, and it, it kind of varies. Uh, most of them are, are quite busy. The last couple months has been, you know, if you want overtime, take overtime. Um, you know, it ebbs and flows as with any company, but you're pretty much always going to get your, your normal work in. Awesome. It seems like right now you're like, if you want overtime, you can have overtime. If you want to bring your friends to work and work for us, you yeah. can do that. Yeah. Like, yeah, whoever you got, come on, bring them on in. Yeah. We were just talking about that, uh, you know, in a past episode, we were talking about how hard it is to find employees right now. And, Sean, I think it's you could difficult. probably <laughs> jump in on that subject, right? It is very difficult. Yeah. And, you know, the one thing that, you know, with the, the CNC machine, I think that's, you know, the one thing that a lot of people don't think about is that it's an employee that's there every single day. Yes. And it's something that you can depend on and not have to worry that they're just going to flake out on you the next day. Right? Yeah, it's it's really it's more than that because that machine can do more than what an employee can do. Yeah. Um and certainly a lot faster. Yeah, more efficiently. Kind of along that same uh that same kind of idea here of why did you choose to go to CNC Technology? I guess what ultimately made you make that decision 10 years ago? Really the realization that it was getting more and more difficult to compete with companies from the cabinet standpoint standpoint and um, efficiently getting jobs done on time, um, and the amount of work we could get done. So we started exploring that and eventually came across Shop Saber. That's awesome. Yeah. And, you know, I know when we first started talking, obviously you had a couple different companies you were looking at besides yep. us. It wasn't just us. And, uh, you know, m- my one thing I always ask everybody and right out of the, d- the get go, I always asked you guys was, what did you hope to gain out of it? You know, what, we tried to learn a little bit more about what you were doing so we could get you the right machine because obviously we had different models and different things we offered. And you looked, I mean, just so everybody can hear it out there, I mean, I remember it very vividly when you and I talked the first time. I mean, your budget wasn't restricted to just ShopSaver. I mean, you were, you were looking at everything. I mean, you didn't care if it was going to cost you 150 grand. Yep. You'd spend it if it was going to be the right machine for you. Yep. And, you know, obviously um, the one thing I, I guess I would ask openly, you know, for people who want to know this is, you know, when I asked you, what did you hope to gain? I knew the answer now, but for people out there, like, what did you hope to gain when you added the CNC and what did you hope to lose? I mean, I guess where was, what, what was the big change that you were looking for? The biggest thing we wanted to gain was efficiency and accuracy. Um, what we wanted to lose was some of the mistakes that were happening, um, yield of what we could get out of stuff. And, uh, and then, you know, another big gain that we found through it all was the ability to do more things more stuff and what we could do with it yeah and you know we can get there later on but that's where it opened up a whole new world for us that's awesome yeah and you know that's that's a big thing for people is that we we always joke around about harold Her- yeah i you know, got a hair yeah. hire who wants to hire harold yeah don't hire harold uh, but the reality is is like that's what this is about is it's like you don't end up with those employees that you just can't trust anymore or, you know the people that like we always joke is that you might have very good employees but they're going to make mistakes because let's be honest, Harold's thinking about going partying on the weekend right. or they he party, yeah, party too hard on, on the weekend and didn't come in on Monday. So, you know, that's, there's, there's going to be moments, right? There's yeah. going to be moments where Harold lets you down. Yeah. It's the real Garrett's of the world. Yeah. <laughs> Could I do Garrett? Um, he probably muted my mic now. He's going to he? throw something at you soon. Yeah. <laughs> just shaking his head behind his desk over there. Just all angry. If you had a mic, you could say something. Um, but yeah, so, I guess let's just ask the question of how has your business changed now? You know, obviously you've had 10 years and for the record, it's been 10 years and two machines now. Correct. I mean, you started with the, essentially the pro series is what you started with. Yep. And you've now upgraded since then into the IS series. Yep. And I mean, obviously 
growth has happened. <laughs> yes. So, and if we had the space, we'd have another IS in there. Yeah. So eventually that'll, that'll take place. Um, really what's changed is, is we've grown into more than just a cabinet shop and cutting a variety of other stuff, whether it be foam, um, doing signs. We do a lot of MDF carving. Um, we've done aluminum jobs, a lot of plastics, a lot of phenolic. So we've, we've been able to explore other ways to keep this machine running than, you know, just cut a cabinet job and, you know, a couple days later, cut another one. Yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, our machine for the last two months, at least I can speak for sure, has pretty much been running 12 to 16 hours a day. That's super awesome. That's super awesome. Good. You hear that, Garrett? Because the machine works 12 to 16 hours a day. Almost as much as you, yes. That's, that's exactly where I was going with that. Garrett, good call. Um, but no, that's the, that's the truth on that is, like you said, the machine will run you know, nonstop. And the reality is, is if you had to have your employee there for 12 to 16 hours a day, you probably wouldn't be a very happy employee, would he? Probably not. Yeah. And, and you're going to have more likely mistakes happen. Yeah, right. especially at hour 16. And, and over you know, an extended period of time, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I just think about all the mistakes Jesse makes, and he's only here for six to eight hours yeah. a day. I mean, seven. And only working for five. I've made it seven. Well, we Four, Sean. We haven't hit four <laughs> yet. Yeah. My bad. Would you work that hard for him? Well, <laughs> listen to how he know. talks to me on here. <laughs> Oh, uh, fair enough. I can't. I can't argue it. I'm sorry. Can't I do. My, I do my best. <laughs> I'm gonna do my best today. Absolutely. That's what I tell myself every day on the drive. In. And <laughs> then I come in and you say something to me, and I go, "Today is not the day. I'll try again tomorrow, boss. <laughs> I'll try my best tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. I'll start that tomorrow. Absolutely. No, that's funny. Yeah, can we uh, schedule that for tomorrow? I've already committed all my screw ups today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Only allowed so many today. Yeah, <laughs> usually it's four. <laughs> four a day. <laughs> but very well, generous. <laughs> but what did that do for you guys' production timing? I mean, what have you guys seen happen since you added the CNC? Well, we can get a lot more done. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can cut a whole kitchen in a day. Yeah. And uh, what would it take you? I mean, just for guys out there, I mean, I've got guys out there that don't believe me, I think, when I say it. So I want you to. I mean, truthfully, like, what does it take a machine to cut? If I put a sheet of material up there on the table to cut a, ca a base cabinet out, what would you say the average runtime is? If you were going to, well, everything gets nested, so it's hard to say a single cabinet. Yep. But let's say you take a whole job. On average, a full sheet's going to take three to five minutes. Wow. Maybe three you minutes. Guys you that? guys heard that. It's probably closer. Harold barely got the tools plugged yeah. in three to five minutes. Yeah. So. And that's three different tools. And you're hearing that from a user. Like we talk about that all the time, but you're hearing about so from someone that does it day in and day out. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Three tools, like you said. So that's going to be. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Sean, but we're going to drill the shelving holes. We're going to do our dados, and we're going to cut those parts out. Correct. I mean, in three to five minutes. That's awesome. So, just quick math here. I mean, if we have a typical kitchen, I mean, what would you say your typical kitchen? How many sheets of material are we talking? For an average size, uh, I get it. It varies. You do for ours, thirty to fifty. Thirty to fifty sheets for a kitchen. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you we'll, think we'll about do that. that in a day. Yeah, I mean, you, a lot of times you spend more time unloading the table and marking your parts and yeah, between between sheets than you do actually cutting. Yeah, and that's I mean, think about that. You, your your guys are still busy. They're still doing their thing. You still got people that you're gonna you know because you got guys out there that are thinking, well, I don't want to get rid of Harold. <laughs> like he's a good guy. Right. Like you don't have to. You, yep. They just transition into a really an easier life, if not, you know? Right. And would you not say that? I mean, your employees don't have to work quite as hard as they would have to if you didn't have the machine? Well, they're not having to lift large sheets on the table saws and yeah. move things around like that. You know, it speaking makes it a lot of, easier. Speaking of lifting hard sheets on things, you guys, your wife just bought you a present, did she not? <laughs> she did. Yeah. She says I'm getting too old. <laughs> What'd she, she buy you? She bought a vacuum lift. Nice. Yeah. It's super cool. So. I watched him. That, his wife sent a video and it was him playing with this vacuum lift thing, and it was uh, it was pretty cool. They uh, doesn't take much effort to pick up a sheet of material. It does anymore, not. Does it? I think our six year old will be able to load the machine now. See, awesome. that's what the plan was. That's there. cool. Secret, secretly, they were yeah, yeah, they were right. getting the one that doesn't go to school. Get, all get the more time. work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they got more workers now. The six year old can run that thing. Get it going. It's good. Good thought process. Yeah, it is. So no, I just had to say it because that's you know something that I'm glad you brought up because guys, you got guys out there that think they need these auto loaders and unloaders on their machines and. I mean, we've we've talked to so many people over the years that are like, without an auto loader, unloader, I'm not buying a CNC. 
you, you really don't need an auto loader unloader for the majority of, of work that's out there. Am I correct? No. I, I don't think so. Um, you're really, you're taking up that much more real estate in your shop too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for me, that's a, that'd be the bigger b- deal is, yeah. yeah. Well, I need that space. You've been to AWFS. Yep. You went to the woodworking show. You and I were sitting there, and, and fortunately, you've come down a few times to hang out with us in our booth. Um, voluntarily came down and basically worked with us, which I mean, we're grateful for that. But the how many times have you seen at the shows? And you and I always joke about it. Those loaders and unloaders fail all the time. I mean, this is at a show where they're supposed to be showing you how well it works. Product. And me and Sean have stood there and watched them work on a loader unloader for half a day. Mm-hmm. At a brand new machine, at a show, and they can't get it working. Right. What's going to happen in your shop? And those are the guys that, you know, train you in on it. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the guys who are supposed (laughs) to teach you how to use it. Exactly. (laughs) Um, We've had other shops. And, and, you know, I think people sometimes kind of miss it. But, I mean, we've had shops say that they they can't get these machines running. They don't know how to get it running. They're not going to, they're not sure what to do. Sean, I mean, really, what was the procedure for you as you got things started? I mean... Well, when I started into CNC, I, I didn't know anything about it. Yeah, I knew computers, but I didn't know anything about a CNC. And a little bit nervous, yeah. Um, I came down for Shop Sabers training, and at that time was different than what is offered now. Yeah. Um, Back then we handed them a notepad. Yeah. <laughs> what's offered notes. now is a lot more extensive. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, anyway... This machine sets up so easy. Um, when they say it's plug and play, it literally is plug and play. If you set up your vacuum and get your dust collection set up, that's all on your end anyway. You take this machine, take your controller off, plug it in, to remove the shipping bolts, and you're pretty much ready to go. Move back up just a second. Did you take it off the truck yourself? I did. How hard was that? It wasn't hard. It was pretty easy? It was easy. Pretty confident doing it? Yeah. A lot of people worry about that. That's a lot of questions we get a lot is how hard is it to get it off the truck and they're not very confident they can do it. Yeah. For me, uh, it worked out great. There was a house going up down the road and I ran down there and asked the framer if he'd let me borrow his lull and he said, sure. Nice. So I drove it down and quick unloaded it. I pictured Sean Morley driving down the road in a lull behind all these boats heading to the lake. <laughs> right. <laughs> like waving at them all like, hey, just going to unload my CNC. Yeah, come quick. see this first, guys. Yeah, come check it out. Then you can go fishing. Yeah. yeah. We, we did it that way once. And uh, with the, one of the other machines, we was, it was a little trickier. We just uh, called a tow truck company, and he winched it off onto a flatbed and lowered it down. Awesome. It was no big deal. Innovation awesome. right there. That's, 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 that's awesome. awesome. I like hearing that. That's yeah. what, like I said, that's one of the big questions we get a lot is people aren't confident taking them off. How hard is it? Do I have to get a rigging company in here to do this? Yeah, that's one way to do it. But if you've got, you know, a good forklift and a means to be able to do it, it's really not that hard. Awesome. And that's why we tell people, rent a forklift. And it's really, it's something that our team can walk you through it. And yep. we give you now, you know, again, going back to when Sean bought his first machine, he was like a sketch drawing on a piece of paper. And I was like, hey, yeah. you should try this. Yeah. But now we actually have a manual and all this stuff that, you know, yep. is really detailed out to kind of help you get things off of, you know, the truck. And we have a prep guide that kind of prepares you for being ready when the machine shows up. Back when Sean, you know, was getting his machine the first time, we didn't have a lot of that. So it was, you know, a lot more word of mouth and, and it was still easy to do it then. Now we yep. actually have documented you know, things to put you in place. So it's important to, you know, talk about that. I'm glad that you brought that up because it is something that, you know, people think about. Um, Now, you know, there's, there's a lot of shops out there that always worry that like, you know, and I think you'll, you'll probably have a story or two about this, but they're afraid to like show off their machine to people because the competitors are going to get their secrets. Right. Yeah. So this is, was a big thing for me when I started um, researching and as Brandon alluded to earlier, as I was looking at other machines, I started looking at Thermwood, um, BSE, um, and a few, you know, a handful of other ones, probably three, four others. And I had a heck of a time trying to get people to just let me see what they're about. And like I said, I didn't know anything about CNC. So I really was looking for advice. Mm-hmm. And I found that nobody would help out. Um, so from day one for me, when I got connected with shop saber i told brandon right away hey anybody that wants info have them give me a call and i'll be more than happy i mean i'm you know as far as you guys are concerned i'm in the country yeah you know and yeah. i probably got six shops in a few mile radius yeah and i never compete against those guys 
there's shops everywhere. Yeah. You know, and right now, especially, there's more work out there than any one of us can handle. Every mm. shop I know is, they can't keep up. I mean, we're booked probably through February right now. It's so, good for you. It's crazy. It's awesome. I'm not worried about competition. So if yeah. anybody wants to come check out the machine, come to our shop, take a look. You call me up, call Brandon, call Jesse, and they'll give you my info. It doesn't bother me. Don't call bit. Garrett. Yeah, you've taken a few phone calls from our customers. Quite a few. Quite a few. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and that, but that's the cool thing about it is that it's, and people are hearing it, like, this is Sean saying, like, just call me. Like, and that's the reason I bring it up is because you get guys out there that are like, well, there's already a shop in my town with, with a CNC machine. Like, who cares? It's mm-hmm. really not going to affect your business. If you're worried about somebody in your town taking business from you, you're probably not doing something right right now. I mean, right. the reality is, like Sean said, there's six shops. You said they're everywhere. Yeah, and it's. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, Sean, correct me if I'm wrong, but do you and another shop in the area not feed each other? Are you guys? We do. Yeah, say I thought so. I thought I remember hearing a story about how when you got something going on and you can't get it into yep. it, like you have another shop in town that will do the work and vice versa. Yeah. Quite often. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's what happens is these shops... You build a good relationship. Yeah. Don't, don't make a negative one. Correct. And you never know, you know, and, and in cases like this a lot, he also has got a CNC. Yep. And there's a lot of situations where, hey, I don't, Sean, I know that you, know, you cut this stuff more often than I do, or you do this. Could you help this guy out? And it's not a matter of me trying to take a client from him or him trying to lose one. Yep. It's of let's help each other out on that. And that like ha- it happens quite a bit. Yeah. And it, and then also, I think something that gets missed here is, do you not, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I, I believe you also cut parts for contractors who don't have CNC machines, correct? I do. So these guys are out bidding, quote unquote, against you, right? I mean, you're competitors, right? You guys can right. compete against each other in the, in the side of bidding work, but then they win the job and they, you still get the work. Correct. Now you just don't have to deal with the headache, right? You don't have to deal with the customer yelling and at you. because it's, it's the best thing ever. Yeah, I say that's the best thing, right? Yeah. So for all you guys out there who have shops who are worried about that, like it's another advantage that you have is that you can outsource time on your machine because as you know, Sean alluded to earlier that his machines are running, right? His machine's running right now with plenty to do. But the reality is, is when you do have downtime, there's really no downtime. I mean, you, you can find work for that machine. Correct. You have other people paying the bill for it, basically. Yeah, we have a few other clients that bring cabinet shops and other people we cut for ooh, that are... Ooh, ooh, I got an idea. Just other things. Tell about the Mall of America story. You know they can't see you raise your hand, right? They can't? No, they can't. Oh, okay. There's no well, camera in here. Well, ooh, yeah. ooh, yeah. hands in the air. like a monkey. Yeah. <laughs> this monkey isn't just normal monkey. The Mall, the mall of America story. Yeah, when you, you cut the... For the aluminum? Yeah. Yeah, we did a... It's a cabinet shop that did an aluminum job, just for everybody listening. <laughs> yes, yes. I had no idea what I was doing at the time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we cut 24 4 by 8 sheets for a facade at the Mall of America on the outside of a restaurant. How cool and is that? That is cool. It was a lot of machining, and it turned out great. That was awesome, because you know what? I got a call from Sean one day, and he's like, hey, can I cut aluminum on my machine? I'm like, yeah. He's like, perfect. I just did a job to do it. I'm like, oh, yeah. awesome. And then he talked to Ben because Ben's smarter than me. And Ben and him. I'm more of a guy that, you know, we'll figure it out after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. yeah why we not? Do. I don't blame you. That's what I do too. Yeah. Why not? Right. Mm-hmm. Say yes to the job and figure out how you're going to get it done later. That's yeah, right. That's what I did here. <laughs> yeah. I'll come work for you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a salesman. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Explained so much right now. Yeah. <laughs> this is now coming together. Got you. <laughs> you did. Uh, but no, it was kind of cool. Like I said, I, I, I think of that story because it's like, it's a cabinet shop. That's like, and, and it was, again, you didn't advertise for it. You didn't try to get that job. It nope. came to you. Somebody it came, came to you that saw the work you did elsewhere, correct? Correct. So does that not kind of fit, Jesse, right into what we've talked yeah. about? Like this opens doors that won't open without yeah, being, it? Yeah, being able to pivot. Like we were talking about slowing down during COVID, right? Yeah. Just being able to turn to something that isn't as slow. Slow down yep. during COVID. Did you hear that, Jesse? Hey, yeah, absolutely. John, did yeah. it slow down during COVID for you? No. I no. kind of figured it didn't yeah. for Sean, but no. there were people out there that yeah. did, and that's what we yeah. were talking about, is no. being able to, yeah, I'm a cabinet I saw the look shop, on Sean's face. He was like, we didn't get to slow down. Right, right. And we figured you were different, but there's people out there that did. Yeah. They, they were able to pivot, turn Correct. to something different. We've that got made guys money. that were in the event production industry. Yeah. And when you think about the event production industry when COVID hit, that the events weren't happening. No. They were gone. Like, you know, and... We have a, you know, we have a customer of ours that specifically bought another machine during COVID that is an event production company because he shut his business down the day that everything kind of hit yep. and his guys were off for the weekend. And by the end of the weekend, he had developed the ability to make those shields. Yeah. COVID yeah. shields and barriers and that. And 
instantly started cutting those and selling those. And he got so busy with that, he literally bought a second machine to keep up. And now, obviously, events are starting to come back. So now he's got a business that's got a demand for events again. And he's still cutting a bunch of, you know, protective, you know, gear and what, you know, and it's not just COVID shields at this point. I mean, right. he does stuff that right. people will continue to use for years to come. And now he's got essentially two businesses that came out of having right. a CNC machine. If he didn't just, have that CNC, what do you do? I just like it that you're able to do something different, right? Cabinets. Well, that's the beauty you, of the CNC is, you know, really, you, it leaves it to your mind and the software that you have to be able to cut what you want to cut. And you can do full 3D models with it, um, just a variety of stuff. You know, we got one job once. You just got Jesse excited here. He, you said leave it to his mind and then 3D model. He's yeah. just, he's, yeah, I'm, I'm out now, yeah. guys. <laughs> Wasn't the direction I was going. Yeah, that's where he's going, I'm telling you right you now. You took it there. <laughs> but, we, you know, we, we, did, we did pick up a job from a client that didn't know who we were, um, that was shopping around for a particular item, and they needed more than eight inches of gantry height. Well, they couldn't, all the shops they knew of, their machines couldn't cut that. And he finally came across us. Well, here, three years later now, we're still doing work for them. So just for the record here, so size does matter. It does matter. No matter what she says, size matters. Size matters, matters, Jesse, you heard it. No matter what you may have heard, size matters. You heard it here first. I'm in trouble. (laughs) Um, No, that's awesome. I mean, it's something that you need to think about because we harp on that a lot. Like, people always joke around about the gantry being so tall. But that's why. It's because these, these real-life scenarios do happen where a shop comes to you and says, can you fit this under your gantry? And most people are saying no. And right. it's a pretty easy job to win when you're the only guy saying yes, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. Pretty simple. Pretty simple there. You know, they don't, they don't have a lot of choices. They're probably going to give you their business. Can you imagine calling 10, 12 people? No, no. And then you call a shot and yes, done. Right. You're done calling. Where do I ship you're the frustrated. material? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're frustrated already because you've yep. called so many people and you can't get an answer. And now you found a shop that can do it. Yep. You're, you, what are you doing the next time you got a job? I'm just going to give it to Sean. Yeah, you're going to call that guy again because he said yes. When Every time. No. Even, even if the other shops could have done the second job. Like, think about that. How many times, Sean, do you get returning customers because you did the first job? All the time. And it's not Majority as hard the second time, is it? Correct. Yeah, second time they trust you. They, don't, they know who you are. They've seen your quality of work. So, you know, that's something to think about with it, too, you know, as you start looking at it. So... You know, in, in a way of how has your business changed? I mean, your reputation, right? I mean, it's, it's helped your reputation. Even though you didn't have a bad reputation before, it helped you expand your reputation. Yeah. So, you know, you have the growth, obviously. We've talked about that. You've, you've grown the business. I have to imagine as you've grown, you've probably been profitable throughout the growth or you wouldn't be doing this, right? Correct. So the CNC made you profitable because you didn't have to hire two or three more guys to do the work that the machine's doing. Yeah, and in, in a huge part, you know, as we've kind of stated already is, we're able to do so many other things. Yeah. And it, that does a lot of things. One, the guys love it too in the shop because they're not, you know, sanding apart all, every day. Yeah. They're not doing the same thing all the time. Yeah. So creativity for them is fun too. For yeah. sure. Yeah. And, you know, at Lakes Area Custom Cabinetry, you guys don't just do the cabinetry side of it, but you also do the doors and drawers, correct? We do all the dr- drawers. Yep. They're all cut on the CNC. Yep. Dovetail, Baltic Birch. Yep. Um, doors, we do some of them. Okay. Some we order out. Okay. Gotcha. And on the doors that you do at your shop, what style do you typically cut? The ones we usually cut in the shop are going to be mission. Okay. Uh, we do do a lot of MDF mission doors. Okay. Uh, those obviously we cut because yep. we've got CNC. So, yep. mm-hmm. uh, we do thousands of those a year. What are you ordering out? Just for everybody listening, go, well, what, what's he ordering out and why? If we're going to order doors out, it's going to be five-piece wood doors. Okay. And we're either doing it because of time, mm-hmm. and, we, you know, we can't get to it in the shop, and we can be doing other stuff. Yep. Um, or if the rare occasion somebody wants a raised panel door, mm-hmm. then we'll order those out. Okay. Yeah, and, I mean, right there, it gives you a little bit of freedom because you kind of control what you buy and what you make. I mean, right. You have the time to do it, you're going to do it. But if you don't have the time... You send that out and make money on the profitable stuff in house. Right. So that, that's that's huge, you know. And you know, but that's something people I think forget to think about is that in your cabinet business, you are going to have opportunity to do your own dovetail drawers. Yes. You are going to have the ability to do your you know shaker doors, if you will. You know, like you have the ability to do these things. You don't have to, but there's definitely money to be made in those industries, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, the MDF doors are great, uh, especially with the 
how far MDF has come as, as far as what you can order mm-hmm. and the quality of it, uh, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, the doors that we produce, they don't warp. I, I haven't gotten a call back in probably five years. That's awesome. As far as, uh, you know, this door's moved this much or yeah. this is separating. I, we don't have that issue. So it's awesome. You know, and that's something that, yeah, I'm glad you said it because we get a lot of guys who think they hear the word MDF and it just automatically, you know, it has a bad reputation out there and cheap MDF is, is cheap for a reason. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you got to buy the right stuff. It does have a bad yeah. reputation. Yeah, yeah, correct. But you got to buy the right stuff. I mean, and, and Sean, I've seen some of the doors you've done and you would never believe their MDF, like the, no. the finishes that are put on them and the way that, you know, the, the door looks when it's done. You've handed me doors that there's no way it looks like MDF. I mean, it is a pretty remarkable product. Right. Yeah, we've got a couple million dollar job going on right now. And the client said, yeah, absolutely, I don't want MDF. Yep. Um, but the builder said, bring a sample. Let's just show it to them. Yep. And here's your price difference. So we did. And the guy looked and said, from the face, well, I can't tell a difference. Correct. They look the exact same. Yep. And... He said, yeah, let's just do MDF. So he changed his mind right there. Yeah. And that's, that's something that's huge because that's, you know, we can't show that right now, obviously, on the podcast, but we can definitely, we'll, sh- we'll upload some photos, right, Garrett? So we'll upload some photos of some work that he's done in the past, and um, you won't believe it. I mean, some of the stuff that Sean has done, he sends, you know, I'm fortunate enough, he sends me pictures of some of the stuff he does, and it's just remarkable. I mean, it looks like it should cost 10 times what it costs. And that's the other thing I think that, you know, we like to touch on is, the machine itself has allowed you to be more aggressive with your pricing when you need to be. Yeah. You know, that's something you can go after some of those jobs that you want and you can also ignore some of the ones you don't want. Absolutely. So you kind of, you get to hire and fire your clients, right? <laughs> nice. So that's kind of nice. You get to choose who you want to do business with and there's plenty of work out there to do it. So, um, now, so everybody's out there, obviously we've talked a lot about you buying a machine, but I don't think we've actually really talked about the machine, I guess. Let's t- tell, tell everybody, you know, what do you own? Let's, let's start there. We've got the IS-510. So it's got an IS series, um, which is our industrial strength series. Um, now, how hard was it to choose a machine? I mean, when you were choosing something, how hard was it to narrow it down to that IS machine? Well, I, it really wasn't. Um, I, you know, I had the, the first shop saber, which was, you, you don't even make anymore, yep. but it essentially is the pro. Yep. Um, and we were happy with that and the service provided with it. It was an easy choice to jump up to that one. So. Um, and the difference in what this one does compared to my old one is yeah. is incredible. It's unbelievable. So you don't regret making the change? Not at all. That's no. great. No, and in, in fact, I mean, I look at all the time with the, you know, we mentioned earlier the other machines we were looking at. Mm-hmm. They do the same thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, essentially. Yeah. Um, when I first was looking at it in my first machine... The shop saber technically it did more, yeah. Because I you had the higher gantry, yeah. Which you know we talked about earlier got yeah. me a job, yeah. Um, so I looked at it. Why would I spend one hundred and fifty thousand on on a thermoid when I could have bought that one? Yeah. And you know my first one was what forty forty five. I don't even remember anymore. Yeah, I think it was mid forties. Um, and again, I'd spend ten years and yeah. But yeah, I mean it would have been mid forties ish. So yeah, when you but that's it's a third of the price. And at the end of the day, you're holding up two the same product. Yeah, exactly. Two cabinets that are the same, right? I mean, at the end of the day, it's it, you're not going to be able. To, no, has any customer ever come to you and asked you what style machine or what machine are you running your machines on and made their decision based on that? Uh, I don't know. My guess is not. Probably it's not, not too often that if you by you own. What are you them, running? Do you have a hundred fifty thousand dollar machine? No. Oh, I'm not buying from you. They they don't care. You're, oh, you're asking from a clientele. Yeah. Oh, Evans, no. Yeah. I not mean, no all. customers ever come into your shop and been like. If you don't own a hundred fifty thousand dollar machine, I ain't buying. I'm going somewhere else. Correct. No. They don't care. They just want. A, I mean, you just talked about it. You have an MDF door job that you're working on now right. in a million dollar operation that the guy swore he was not going to have MDF doors in. Yep. It, they don't know what they don't know, and right. the customer just wants a good looking part. They have assumptions that they think they know what they don't know, but as a business, I mean, you show them what they don't know, and they make the decisions. Right. And that's kind of how shop Saber's always done business too. Is like when you and I talked. You were $150,000 machines you were looking at. And you and I started talking and going through it. And we showed you some of the features that they didn't have. And it's pretty easy at that point to go, well, why would I go spend three times the money if I'm losing? For less. Yeah, I'm losing ability. So, yep. you know, that that's the one thing that I think people lose track of out there as a buyer. You know, and I guess for the people out there that are looking at buying right now, 
what would you do differently now that you have a machine? You know, now that you know what you know, what would you do differently? Where we're sitting right now, I don't know if I would do anything differently. Uh, when I started, the, the only thing, and, and I've told many of your clients, yep. the one thing I would have done was gone with a different vacuum or right. a bigger vacuum. Yep. And my original was a 20, 20, 20 horse? Yep. I think it was a 20 horse FPZ, um, which is a regenerative blower. And the majority of the times it worked great. Where I struggled was when we were doing uh, Baltimore, the dovetail drawers. And occasionally you'd lose a part. On those drawer fronts, correct? On the, on the drawers. Yep. So you have a really small part that's, you know, four inches tall and mm -hmm. 10 inches wide, whatever. It, that's a little part for something that has a lot of machining done to it. Yeah. And Baltic Birch doesn't always hold that well anyway. Yeah. So that would have been one place that I would have changed. Well, over the years we've had that, mm -hmm. um, I think I blew it, had to rebuild that twice. Yeah. You know, um, it, it's in a dedicated room with some other machines and it just overheated. So we, we did. We re rebuilt it. Well, the last time I had enough, I called Brandon up. I said, I, it's time to make a change. And we switched to the Becker 15 horse. Yeah. And now that I've learned more of how to use that, it's phenomenal. Um, and if I wanted to upgrade from that or add more, mm -hmm. you can stack those. Mm -hmm. So you have that ability as well. So that would have been the only thing is I would have done a different pump or gone bigger at that time. Yeah. Would have started uh, with the Becker essentially rather if, than. If I would have started with the Becker 15, it probably have been fine. Yeah. You know. Yep. And, and now everything works great. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's something to think about. So when we talked in episode, whatever, never it was, Garrett could probably tell us what episode vacuum was, but, um, what was we it? talked a little bit about choosing the right vacuum pump and the regenerative blower versus the vein root style. And, you know, obviously we have the F4, we have a lot of different solutions. And the reality is, is, I mean, you, you just proved it. All the pumps will work if used correctly. Yep. You use them the right way, they will work. But there are advantages and disadvantages to each thing. And as you said, the smaller parts hold down better with higher HG rated pumps. And that's going to be like your Becker pumps. But the flip side, you know, what you did mention was you had to learn how to use that pump because you have less CFM. So you have to make sure you're using the CFM correctly and not having abnormal amounts of leaks and things like that. Yeah. When I said, you know, now that I've learned how to use it, the big yeah. difference was with the FPZ, I didn't have to cover up any of my table. Yeah. So we'd throw a four by eight sheet on a five by 10 table. I, it was fine. Yep. For ninety nine percent of my stuff, where with the Becker, if we're especially if we're doing smaller pieces, yep, we'll cover up the rest of that spoil board. Yeah, so essentially you're blocking it off so it can't leak air. Right. Yeah, and it's you know, and we've always said it, a vacuum is always the area of least resistance. We'll get the most air, you know, and, mm -hmm. and air is going to try to escape. It's not going to create restrictions. So yeah, obviously by blocking it off helps with that. Um, Garrett, you're looking at me like a student that wants to ask a question. I don't ask questions. Did you forget? Did you forget what episode that was? 18. 18? That a boy. Episode, he's look at he's that. just captivated. He's on top he's of cap he, he hears you talking. He's just excited. Um, episode 18, if you want to learn a little bit about vacuum. But, uh, yeah, we talked about Becker pumps and that. Um, actually, I think Becker joined us. He did. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. So there we go. Um, but, yeah, you know, any advice that you give to a new shop, new buyer, anything like that, anything that you would tell them? Well, definitely do, you know, do your research. Mm -hmm. Um one of the beauties with the, the sales guys here is they're not going to BS you into buying something you don't need. Yeah. Um, when I, you know, back to when I bought my first machine, every single salesperson with the exception to Brandon said, if you're doing cabinets, you must have a drill bank. Absolute must have. <laughs> no, 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 no. And so I, you know, I was down that road. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I got 10 sales guys saying, this is what you have to have. And one guy at Shop Saber saying, you don't need that. Um, I'm a terrible sales guy. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you know, I, I did question it, but it, I was telling Brandon, like, well, no, I need it. You know, everybody says you need to have it. Yep. I question and, a lot of things, he says, Sean. <laughs> you ain't the only you one. Know, but when you go from traditional building and you're yep. drilling 21 holes at a time, yeah, it makes sense. You yep. know, that you need to add that because mm -hmm. we're going to go to drilling one hole at a time. Are you nuts? <laughs> yeah. Well, reality is now... You don't need it um, until my machine's going to run at least 40 hours a week, every week of the year, just cutting cabinets. I'm not putting one on my machine. Yeah. And the beauty of that machine, I can add it. Yep. So yep. 
That's where it makes my job easier because a lot of these sales guys out there, we talk about it in other episodes as well, is that they're just going to tell you what you want to hear. You know, they're going to tell you whatever is going to make them the most money. They don't really care about your real business. You know, they're going to, well, you can't have the drill head later and I make more money now to do it. So you need a drill head. Right, right. Well, I can sell it to you later. So I'm not going to lie to you until you need it because it's easier to sell a machine that fits the guy's budget that will do what he wants than to just sell him, you know, all the bells and whistles. You, yep. you just don't need it. Yeah. In the majority of these shops that are buying a machine for their first machine, if they're cutting cabinets traditionally right now and then they're going to jump to a CNC, their machine might only get run once or twice a week. Yeah. Um, at most, really. But, Some shops might be a few times a month. And that's what's, you know, these guys, they don't think they can afford a machine because of that. They're like, oh, I can't afford a machine because it's only going to run a, once a week. You, you can't afford well, not to have a CNC. Once you learn to sell a little bit more yeah. because you're going to get more in. Yeah. And, you know, in our case, when we realized, look how much more stuff we can do with this. Yeah. Is we're... How many more really jobs did you be able to take on, right? Well, what I love is when we get these jobs that the machine's just running. Yeah. You know, we just completed one that it's running on average three hours per job, three hours per cycle yeah. of this job. So we set it up to run. It runs for three hours. Well, meanwhile, the guys are doing other work. I'm yeah. doing other work. You know, you're not babysitting it. Yeah. So you're basically doing two jobs at one time. Making exactly. money while making money. It's making Watching money. Watching your money make money. Yep. That's pretty good. Well, heck, I went to lunch while I was around one day. <laughs> Look at that. Got to eat yeah. food. I love food. food. I'm actually So you really got to have lunch now. and still made money while at lunch. Yep. That's pretty awesome. Now, what options are a must-have as a cabinet shop? Let's just go there. You're a cabinet shop. What options are a must-have? To me, you'd need to have a tool changer. Tool changer? You've got to have a tool changer. If you're only going to do cabinets, you could get by with the five. Mm -hmm. um, five position, you mean? Five position. Yep. If, you know, I don't know what the upgrade is to a 10 you might want to just do it right away. Just do so the 10. It's not it. a lot. It, it, it's probably going to be worth it in the long run. Yep. Um, what else? Definitely the phenolic top. Okay. Got it. I mean, at least in Minnesota, the humidity, <laughs> humidity is just ridiculous. Yep. Um, what about know, your vacuum? Would you consider that to be a must-have vacuum hold down? Vacuum or? you got to have. Got to have a vacuum. Okay. What about pop-up pins? I wouldn't want to not have them. Yeah. I mean... It makes your life too easy. Um, the too other easy, too easy. The the other thing, at least from the shop saber, is have you made the dust dock standard yet? Not yet. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna keep get a dust dock. You, I'm gonna keep making you ask me if it's standard. Get a dust dock. Um, it's get, it makes a world. So world let me of get difference. this straight: the dust dock works. It works very it's well. It's not this made up marketing plan that everybody says it is. No, it works really well. Um, How'd you guys edit that video? I hear that a yeah, lot. Yeah, that's my favorite. How'd you edit that? that video to make it look like it is works? that magic? Yeah, no, it's not magic. It really works. Yeah. You know, depending on the dust collector you got, you know, we still have a little bit of dust left on the table from cutting cabinet parts mm -hmm. because you're going to get it shoved down into the cutouts and yeah. whatever. The dados are always clean. Yep. Um, you're going to surface your spool board, two and a half inch fly cutter. I don't have a speck of dust on the machine. It's awesome. Love it. It's my so, favorite tool. My favorite tool as well. I hate cleaning. So do I. Ah, it's not fun. No. Yeah, we, we're a huge fan of the dust. And, I, and yeah. I just showed Brandon some pictures of the job we just did. Yeah. That I couldn't use the dust. Oh, on. my God. I couldn't use anything because of the I we, saw we had to use yeah, I showed six you that. inch bits. Yeah. That was insane. Uh, yeah, it gave me a heart murmur. It was, yeah, we I saw it. I'm like, oh my god, there's so much dust. I can't handle it. It's knee deep. <laughs> yeah. Well, we filled a 20 yard dumpster. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. We might. We may even have to post that. That's we have to post that. Like life without a dust. 20 dock is yard it dumpster. Was messy. Yeah. Yeah. Especially after you have a dust dock, you go from like no dust to it's snowing dust. <laughs> yeah. The whole shop was covered in a quarter inch of dust. If I knew the song "It's Raining Men," I would have sang that, but with dust instead of it's men. It's raining dust. <laughs> yeah. Here. Exactly. There we go. Um, so. When we look at software, okay, software has to come, in, you know, along with, uh, with the machine. I guess what software do you use right now? What are you running? For cabinets, we run KCD. Okay. For everything else, we run either Aspire or Rhino, which is Vetric, Vetric which Aspire, mm -hmm. V-Carve, whatever you want to call it. Yep. So yeah, Aspire is just Aspire. the full blown version of it. Yep. The more three D capable yep. software. Yep. And then you use Rhino. You said it right before yep. I rudely interrupted you. Yes. <laughs> Rhino. I love Rhino. Rhino is very, very powerful. Um, you can do almost anything in it. You can show things a lot better. So if you were going to create a guitar, you would probably use Rhino. Am I correct? I would. Yeah. It, it, especially from the standpoint, from a client standpoint. Yep. I can show something in Rhino a lot cleaner and a lot better okay. to a client. And you would use Vetric probably for more your artsy stuff. Am I correct? 
We use that for a lot of your quick, easy things. Okay. Um, if you got to cut something extra or... Say quick, you know, easy, not quickie. <laughs> quickie. Yeah, I heard you... I was simple. thinking about that 3D yeah. model. I thought you should just say simple. <laughs> quickie? But yeah, they, they both have their purposes and they're both great. That's awesome. And then, you know, as far as software goes, there's a lot of cabinet softwares out there. KCD is your choice. You've worked with KCD for, I think, 10 years now almost. Um, for a while. Yeah. Ken Fry over there is who we, we, I know yep. you work with Ken's quite great. a bit. Yeah, Ken's great. But um, obviously, you have a couple different options out there. I mean, a lot of people are using Mosaic. A lot of people are using KCD. But you've seen Mosaic. I mean, obviously, Mosaic works with our machines. You've seen the parts that come out of it. It works really well. It's just you chose KCD because Mosaic wasn't around then, correct? It was. Uh, yeah, when I first got it, Mosaic was not around. Yep. Um, but, you, you know, you knew the story. I won't go down the road yeah. of, uh, of a different software that we tried. What? You had bad experience with a competitor? Um, Unbelievable. What? It, Unbelievable. it was uh, It was very bad. Yeah. Uh, but when we switched to KCD, you know, they had me cutting cabinets within a day. Yeah. And, that, and that's, that's, you know, that's the kind of companies we partner with, though. Yeah. Is KCD, you know. We really do. We, we work with them quite, you know, regularly. I know you were just here for our demo days. You came down and saw us for demo days. Um, they were talking about, they were demonstrating KCD at that time. Um, what did we do? Closet? No, we did dovetail drawers, I think is what we were showing off that day. I think so. Yeah, some dovetails. And I know that you were talking about the dovetails that you do. Um, works really slick. I mean, the KCD has the ability all built into software. You don't have to become a, a wizard. You don't have to be an IT specialist to do that, do you? You don't have to do anything. Yeah. Um, you know, if you design a cabinet, it's, well, heck, you don't even have to really design the cabinet. It's, yeah. They've got a library, and you can modify the, out of that library. It's yep. very simple. So you set that into place. If it's got drawers in it, you just go tell it to cut the drawers. You don't need to figure out the sizes. So for all those out there that are freaked out, because every time, that's the number one call we get. Like, I can't figure out how to do the, I don't know how to design in a software. Yep. You, you don't have to learn how to design in software, do you? Not with KCD, you don't. Yeah. Um, th- to me, they make it as straightforward as you can. Yeah. You go through a list, a cut list, and tell it how you want your cabinets cut, and they've already got all the cabinets there. So you put it into your design. There it is. That's pretty cool. Pretty easy, huh? Yeah, pretty easy. So you heard it from Sean. You get KCD with your shop saber, and you cut cabinets, and you don't have to think. That's what he said. That's what I heard. Yeah. Is that what you said, Sean? Yeah, Jesse's starting next week. Yep. <laughs> what? How'd this happen? I'm you told him you'll work for him, right? That's right. I, did tell you. <laughs> I didn't actually mean it. I'm really excited to come work for you, <laughs> just so you know that. that Dang it. Teach me some beard care tips. That's right. Thanks. <laughs> come on. We got to get rid of that beard. Do we not? What for? We just got to get rid of that thing. Look he doesn't it. like it because, like, my genetics, I can't grow what you have, right? <laughs> that I can't thing. have that the, like, the Greek god beard. <laughs> yeah, I have, is like, I yeah. have this that the cat could lick off, right? <laughs> we're, we're working with it. We're uh, trying it. Hey, Jesse. What's that? Didn't something happen with your beard this week? I don't want to talk about that. That's not <laughs> podcast appropriate. If you want to know what happened, you can call me directly. Yeah, it's a good story. Call Jesse about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, Sean, speaking of inappropriate things that happened to his beard this weekend, you have kids, don't you? I do. So how many kids do you have? We have six boys. Six? Six? Yeah. How do you have any hair? Well, it's all on his face. It's almost gone. Yeah, it's nah, all on his face. Yeah. Um, you have a wife. Yeah. Mrs. Wonderful wife. Mrs. Sean Morley. And... She's awesome. She's, she's great. cooler than he is, even. I kind of figured He's so. pretty cool, and she's cooler. Behind um, every good man, there's usually a good woman. She's super she's awesome. Um, me and Sean would have made poor life decisions already together if Probably. she hadn't kept us in line. So. Um, Def- definitely wouldn't be where we're at with her. <laughs> definitely, yeah. Definitely. I mean, even myself, he, she's, she's awesome. So, um, But hobbies. What's your hobbies? I love to hunt. Um, golf a little bit. And watch my kids' sports. He's a big that's, sports yeah, That's kind of... Probably watch a lot of sports. Yeah, we had five football games this weekend. That's insane. Yeah. The cool thing is when one loses, you just go root for the other one. True. Right? You're like, yeah, that one sucks. We're going for the next one. <laughs> but he's uh, also a coach. I mean, don't forget yeah. to tell everybody that. You're a coach for traveling soccer. Correct. Um, don't let him downplay it. His kid's like amazing at soccer so he won't bring a little star kids. in he's, the family he's that guy oh yeah all of his kids are stars in one way or another it's just they what, what are they a star in one's a football star they they're uh some of them are pretty athletic yeah yep one of them was a soccer star they're like uh, pele jr sweet um got a good soccer player he plays your own soccer wrestles plays football wow yeah. yeah um yeah he's my ninth grader and we're pretty pretty proud Impressive. of him yeah 
he uh, he made the varsity squad for football this year as their kicker. That's, that's right? crazy. So, yeah, pretty excited about it. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. That is cool. And you know what? I will speak from firsthand experience. They're also the nicest kids ever. You go meet them, and they're just super respectful, like super nice. Like for having six kids, you'd think like. There's no chance. They're just going to be like wild cats running all over. No, they're super respectable kids. And like, it's awesome. Well, if they don't behave, we just make them haul four by eight. <laughs> you know. Yeah, they got to haul them. You gotta carry this to this side. <laughs> yeah. you, want, uh, you want a couple helpers this next week? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hey, do you think we should? Let's do it. Should we do it? Should we do it? We should do it. I think we should do it. Tell them what it is. You ready for rapid fire? I guess. <laughs> so rapid comes. fire. We're going to. Just, just off the wall questions. Yeah, from we're gonna throw Brandon. questions at you. First thing that comes to your mind. Yep, that's what we want. We just want the answer to the question. Okay, ready for this? No, you're not ready. Good, perfect. Let's get started. Hey, fire away. Is it true that your beard gives you superpowers? Yes. Okay, I thought so. Favorite type of music? I don't really have any. What no do you favorite to? music? No. I... CNC Birds machines. chirp? Uh, talk radio. <laughs> he listens to CNC Okay, fair machine. enough. Or, I get or that. Or just, you know, random music, whatever's I, on. I get that. I get to talk radio. What's your favorite movie or TV show? Uh, TV show being Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. That's a good one. Favorite color? Pretty good. Blue. You know why? Shop saver. <laughs> Shop saver. <Keep> right. <laughs> favorite drink? Uh, old fashioned. Beautiful. Favorite destination to vacation? Hawaii. Summer or winter? Summer. Favorite non-pornographic website? I don't have time for the internet. There's only one answer. There's only one answer. Oh, shop (laughs) Shop (laughs) there. What's your favorite number? 14. 14. Favorite sport? To play. His his kids are listening right now. Like, which one is it? (laughs) To play soccer, to watch, at least from my kids' standpoint, wrestling, otherwise football. Okay. Nice. Here we go. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Just for the record, I'm going to pause rapid fire real fast. He just named all of his kids sports without naming one of their sports. That was nice. I saw that too. Yeah, that was a total dad move. That was an impressive dad move. Yeah, a total dad move. Really good. (laughs) Back to yours. I'm sorry. What was that? Uh, You were up actually. I said cats or dogs. He said said dogs. Dogs. Okay. Um, Favorite food? Ribs. Yeah, I knew that answer was coming because I went to his house and had ribs that he made. They were amazing. (laughs) Phenomenal. (laughs) If you could be any animal, what would you be? (laughs) That's a weird question. (laughs) Uh, it would come from Jesse too, of course. Let's go with a lion. It's probably so he can eat you. No, it's a mane. <laughs> Think about it. Well, that face uh, that lion. It doesn't surprise me. <laughs> he has a mane on his face. Is why he's becoming a lion. Oh man, dessert or appetizer? Ooh, appetizer. Pepsi or Coke? Pepsi. Well, Pepsi product. <laughs> Neither one. I know the answer. I don't really this drink pop. Hunting or fishing? Hunting. I knew it. That's it. That's all I had. That's all I had too. Wow. Wow. So like we planned I think that. We're best friends with that. <laughs> want to go do karate in the garage? Yeah, I'm in. Awesome. Sean, you want to come? Sean, you want to do no. karate in the garage? No. No. He's out again. <laughs> Dang it. We, we need someone to run the power tools. So, Sean, where can we check out your work? Where can people check out your work if they want to see your work? Uh, you could find us on Facebook. Facebook. Lakes Area Custom Cabinetry. Is that where they go? You got it. And. Uh, if you want to ever talk... Lake, that or Lakes Cabinetry. I don't know which one. That's some of that. You can yeah. just reach out to us. We'll get you in connect with Yeah, them. we'll get you there. Yeah. yeah, Having time to update that stuff is another story. Absolutely. You know? Oh, you got to be just... I don't have busy. a Garrett. You don't have a Garrett? No. Hey, Garrett, you got any friends that want to be Garrett Jr.? No. Uh, sounds like I'm going to work for him. You want to come too? <laughs> you can't do it. Oh. He said no, Sean. <laughs> you uh. can't go play. Yeah, you can't, you can't take Garrett too. It's not yeah. how... <laughs> Not how this, why are you not in your head? <laughs> he says he's willing to go willingly. Yeah, he he just, he, he's him. already packing his desk right he's now. He's still mad you won't give him a mic. Yeah, I gave him a mic. He gave it away. <laughs> he's pointing at you right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's packing his desk up. He's literally packing his things to go right now. It's like he's going to get in the back of Sean's truck and just I'm ride not, away with him. I'm not going to tell him I was kidding either. I'm staying. He's going. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Well... It's been fun, I think, right? Absolutely. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for, for cutting on the show with us today. If you guys ever want to talk with Sean, if you want, like you said, he, he's open to giving advice and talking, uh, reach out to us. We can get you his contact information. We'll, uh, we'll always pass it along to you. Just talk to your sales guy. Um, but I'm Brandon. I'm Jesse. Thanks for talking shop with Shopsaver. Saver. <laughs>